Welcome back to East Airing Garage. We got our first snowfall of the year. It's minus 10 this morning. Had to go out and uh, snow blow the driveway. Broke one of the shear pins off, so I couldn't find any. So the best thing I could come up with was this galvanized nail. Drove that in there. Works perfect till I can get some new shear pins. It'll do in a pinch. Happy Saturday everyone from ECRN Garage. Today I'm going to look at the Moto Gadget M unit. I've never hooked one of these up before. I'm doing a project for a friend of mine. He's doing a chopper and it has no wire and harness, no anything. So he bought a couple of these just to see if we could uh, make the install go a little easier. I got my 12 volt battery. I read the manual over the weekend and I decided to make my own test bed using an old boot tray. And then two by fours, some scrap wiring I had around. I'll describe what I did here in a second. So I did I had some old trailer lights, boot tray, switches. <clears throat> so I wired in the main power to the M unit, to the battery terminal, and to the negative. So I daisy chained all the switch negatives, and I daisy chained all the light negatives. Back to a common point that go back to the negative on the battery. Uh, the main switch goes from, <clears throat> from the battery to the M unit. And the M unit goes through a main switch to turn it on. So it's just like having an ignition switch. So I have a high beam, low beam, left turn signal switch, right turn signal switch, uh, brake light, and horn. So this is the horn indicator, brake light, tail light. Right turn, left turn, high beam, low beam. And I just have a light here for power on, for ignition. So essentially all the switches, um, there's inputs and outputs. All the inputs from one side of the switch go, to go into this and are grounded on the other side. So it's just a momentary switch only. Uh, it doesn't carry any current to any of the devices. The output, the power does come from this terminal to the output to the lights, ignition, horn, signals, whatever you have. <clears throat> so it's a pretty basic setup. Um, you can read all the terminals here. It tells you which ones go to which for your input and your output. The only thing that I wish they had um, where the letters were would be white on these. They're kind of hard to see. You have to get the angle just right to see what the inputs and outputs are. But other than that... It's a pretty slick, um, compact unit. Uh, every output is good for 10 amps. And I think the output for your starter relay is good for 30. You wire it in with a 40 amp uh, fuse on the main side. So that's basically how it's wired up. And the, the inputs and outputs, you can program different functions by using the horn on button to program everything. So... I played around with some settings. I'm just going to set up the camera on the tripod here and I'll show you how I set this up. Alright, first I'll hook up my battery. I just got the battery out of my Buell here. So I'm going to hook up all the, the two negatives. I have one from all the lights and switches and then one from the Moto Gadget unit itself. I'm not sponsored by Moto Gadget. We just something we <clears throat> seen some of the bike builders using we thought we'd give it a try to help simplify our own projects and if i was ever to build a bike that had no harness or no any fuses or anything i'd be getting this but they're a bit expensive but if you have a bike that already has a full wiring system i wouldn't uh, recommend uh, spending the money this is great for a custom build cafe bobber if you don't have anything or you have one that's fried already I would definitely use this so I got right now I got the power on <clears throat> the, the unit lit up as you make battery contact so I'll turn my ignition on switch the M unit cycles through and it shows anything that's active lit up so right now the it shows your ignition is active so that would I would hook your coil to that and then your coil will be on with the key. This is just my indicator light that says that the board is powered up. And also, the right turn lights, I have them set at 50%. 
and they act as riding lights. <clears throat> so the way I have this programmed, I turn the lights on, the low beam comes on, and the tail light, I have it hooked up as a one wire tail light. So it gives 50% power to the tail light bulb on one wire. And if I switch to high beam, it's just a single push button. My high beam light comes on, everything stays on. Low beam, everything stays on. Um, <clears throat> if you had an old style switch, you have to program it through the menus. Um, the Moto Gadget book has a, it's pretty easily, it's, uh, it's well written and easy to figure out. You just kind of have to, once you get your head wrapped around how the menu works, you can program this thing to do all kinds of things with very minimal wiring. So if I want to turn my lights off, I just hold in on the headlight switch and I can turn the lights off except for the driving lights. Key off, driving lights go off. So I'll turn my low beams on. So my right turn signal I just have it flashing and it cancels the driving lights just on the same as a modern bike. Push button, it's a single push button. Left turn signal, same thing. Flashes. It's meant to have a momentary switch, but you can program it to have the old toggle style switch. Brake light, I have it flashing eight times and then goes on solid. You can have it to flash all the time slowly. You can make it just come on as a normal brake light, but it's just like a little attention getter when you first put your brakes on. And then the horn button, just the light simulates the horn. So, in order to program this thing, what you do is you hold your horn button on, turn the power on, and it'll go through and flick all the lights and go into programming mode when it's flashing. So now you're in programming mode. So to toggle through the main menus, which it tells you in the book which each one are, you can change the settings. So you, every time you click the horn button, it toggles to the next menu item. All the way through till you get back to the start. And to change the menu item, you hold the horn in until this light flashes on the other side, and that's your sub-menus. So you can go through all of your sub menus the same way. And then to reset, you just hold your horn on until it flashes through, turn your horn off, and then the, the M unit will scroll back to its starting position again. So if any time you're ever stuck in the programming, just hold your horn button on for three or four seconds till it goes through its mode, and then it'll restart from zero again. Worst comes to worst, turn the power off, turn it back on. You got all your functions working again. So anyway, that's the little test bed for the M unit. Uh, I can't wait to get this hooked up on the actual motorcycle we're doing. It's going to be pretty fun. I might make a little better test bed. I got some old lights and stuff here, but this was just a quick and dirty to get this up and going. And so I can get my head wrapped around what we got in front of us. And it uh, looks like it's going to be a really great thing to use. I'll go through briefly how to do one of the programming changes. We'll do the brake lights instead of, have it, instead of having it flash eight times. Um, we'll just have it as a continuous brake light. So it's menu four, brake light con configuration in the manual. And right now it's set to D. So I'll turn the horn on with the power until it cycles through into programming mode. So now we have program menu number one. So I'll click it four times, menu number two, menu number three, menu number four. So that's the horn, or the, sorry, the brake light configuration menu. And I'm on A, B, C, D, which is eight times flashing. I think I'll go to E. So if I hold the horn button until that mode flashes on the menu side, I click it one more time. Now it'll be two times flashing, then one second continuous light repeated. So to, to save that to memory, I hold the horn on. It cycles through all the lights. I turn the horn off. And now I should be back to run mode. So now when I turn everything on, I'll have my headlights on, tail light comes on. So now my brake light, when I hit that, 
it just flashes one second. So it does two at the start and then one second continuous from then on. Then it goes back to normal mode. All right, now we'll change the brake light back to a continuous light. So hold the horn button, turn the main power on, cycle through. Now we're in calibration mode, so we'll want to go to number four, one. So now we're three, four, and we want to go to A. So you hold this till it switches over, and we'll switch this back to A. It didn't hold. Let's see. One, two, three, four. And then we're back to A. One, two, A, B, C, D, E. And then we'll hold that to save it. Hold that. All right. So now it should restart. So we'll turn the whole headlights on, tail light comes on. Let's try our brake light. It's just on continuous until we take our foot off the brake. All right, and that's a quick brief setup of going through the menus. Hope this helps a lot. Helped me out. It took me a little bit to figure it out, but once you get kind of the idea of how this works, going through the menus and counting, it works pretty good. I decided to dig through the scrap pile a little more and I found uh, some old, an old box and some old horns and signal lights so I decided to make a little more accurate representation. Anyway, we'll turn the key on. The unit fires up, so we'll turn our headlight on. Got our low beam tail light, high beam tail light, brake light. Back to tail light, left signal light, right signal light, horn, and there we go. Pretty much programmed and ready to install on the chopper. Hopefully we'll be bringing that video to you soon. Remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.